Hey y'all, welcome to Ebonics Academy where I teach you Sims 4 custom content tips. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you a very popular requested lesson, which is how to create a render for your Sims using Blender. This is part two of the tutorial, so make sure that you've gone and watched part one before you move on. Now you'll be setting up the lighting and camera for your render. Make sure you've gone back into object mode and then change the viewport shading to rendered. You'll see it's super dark, but that's because we haven't added any lights yet. Hit shift A and add a sunlight. This is a great light to add an effect and light to the whole scene rather than just one point. You'll need to make it a bit brighter. So in the light settings tab, adjust the strength to your preference and then change the angle so that the light bounces off of your sim correctly. Next, I'm gonna add an area light to give us some additional lighting to create more intense shadows in the render. Firstly, position the area light into a direction that works for the aesthetic that you want. And you can either move the position using the gizmo arrows or by selecting a set position using the viewport gizmo. Rotate the area light into the direction of the sim and continue to adjust the positioning until you're happy with how it looks. And you can even change the color of the light if you want to instead create more of a tinted glow. And I like this color because it matches her top and kind of goes with the vibe that I'm looking for. So now that we've got some light in, let's set up the camera. Change the shader window we opened earlier into another viewport. We're going to use this viewport to get an idea of what the render looks like. Make it a little bit bigger and then press Ctrl, Alt and Numpad 0 to set your camera position. You'll see the dimensions are off in the left window, so we need to adjust them in the render settings. Select the camera in the outliner and then you can move the camera around as you can see here. Changing the focal length also adjusts the zoom strength and then adjusting the resolution in the render settings changes the size of the camera. I set my resolution to 3000 by 3000 so that I can get a render in a HQ square image. And you can basically set the size to whatever you want, but it's only as long as your system can take it. A higher resolution will give you a more detailed image. Now you just adjust the camera in the right viewport until you're happy with what you see in the left. I like to turn off the overlays and gizmo in Blender in our rendering view, just so that we have a clear view of what we're doing. To do this, press the show gizmo and show overlay buttons on the toolbar or press control plus little dashy thing above your tab and shift alt Z. Now I'm gonna set the scene. I'm gonna show you how to do this in two ways. Firstly, add a plane or a cube into your viewport. Here I'm going to add a plane. Scale it up by pressing S and dragging your mouse. And then you can either duplicate or add another plane to add as a backdrop. I gave the plane a glossy node by changing the surface to glossy BSDF in the materials tab. And I change how shiny it is by adjusting the roughness. I then click on the other plane and I was supposed to apply the same texture that I was using for the previous one, but your girl was tired. And yeah, so we kind of messed up here, but make sure it has the same material name if you want the material to be identical. And if not, then just adjust the settings to your desire. I adjusted the color of the plane to match the pink vibe that we were going for. And then adjusted the area light color as well, just to make the glow a little bit less intense. And you can also create more shadowing by enabling the contact shadows and adjusting the distance, bias and thickness. You can add a reflection to your plane by adding a reflection plane. Hit shift plus A and scroll to light probe and then select reflection plane. Rotate this plane in the direction your sim is facing and you basically want the middle of the plane to rest just in front of the visible one. Scale it up so you can see clearer and you should start to see your sim's reflection. And by adjusting the fall off, this will change the fullness of the reflection. I wanted the reflection to be a lot clearer. So to do this, I adjusted the color of the original plane to more of a dark gray and this actually then gave me a much clearer reflection, which is what I was looking for.
This process also works with the cube. So just position the cube to where you want it and adjust the position of the light so that they're inside of the cube. And then of course, adjust the settings we've been through so you're happy with how it looks. I really like to use a HDRI or a high dynamic range image. So once you've found one that you like, you'll click on the background material tab in the color section, you will then select the yellow dot and then select environment texture. And don't be alarmed by the pink, you're gonna replace this with the HDRI that you saved. I am gonna link some for you in the description. I downloaded a cute little lofty HDRI, which I love. And here I was trying to figure out why it was looking so weird, but then I remembered that I did not delete the cube. <laughs> So you can see now it looks really dope, really clear. And you'll see, you can actually see the whole HDR as well. If I wanted my sim to face maybe like a different direction or rotated them just to get a kind of different pose in a different kind of like setting, then there'd still be a background, which is really cool. And it saves a lot of time. So once you're happy with the scene, you've played around with the settings and then got all of the shadowing and lighting how you like it, especially that ambient occlusion, that definitely adds some more depth to your render. Uh, you can then render your image. Click on render on the toolbar and then select render image. Wait a few seconds and then your render will pop up. As you can see, we've got a really nice and clear image. The HDR is a really nice feature to use, but if you want something a bit more immersive, you can absolutely create your own render scene by importing or creating objects and placing them on a scene in a cube or on a plane like I first showed you. This takes a bit more time, but it's a really fire way to create a render as well. I felt the render could use a bit more of a glow like I initially wanted. So I went back and edited the area like color and the size and the position just to kind of get the vibe that I was looking for. I also changed the resolution so that I could get a cute thumbnail as well. And there you have it. Oh my God, it looks so good. So yeah, you can see that we've got our thumbnail ready and yeah, we're good to go. It looks so good. So please let me know how you did in the comments if you felt that this was helpful. And yeah, I've got some classes coming up soon. So make sure that you subscribe to find out when they're on. See you next time.